Hey everybody, thank you for being here live with me on YouTube. I'm Matt Powers. I'm an author, an entrepreneur, educator, seed saver, citizen scientist, soil expert, and family guy. And I teach people all over the world how to live regeneratively. And lately it's been about soil and how to look deeper into soil with microscopy. And one of the questions I often get is, what does inoculant look like under the microscope and how do they measure up how do they compare and so i thought i would just hop on here live and while we're going through here live i'll click with the mouse and we'll we'll, we'll take pictures of everything i'll make sure that we're going through and then i'll post them on social media like afterwards and so you'll be able to see up close each of the images that we're talking about. Because they're all going to look, look, well, some of these, this and this are going to look alike. Um, and and th these two and this will look alike, I, I would say. This won't look like anything else. This won't look like anything else because there's molasses in it. So it's like cloaked in mystery. Because, right? Jet black, right? Uh, and then this is azospirillium. Um, and so th these, this is gonna look different than all of these as well. So we'll have, and then if we have time, I also have biochar. I have the, the, the EM bioceramic dust. <laughs> and I have hyperdrive and, and regular rock dust, like basalt, volcanic, glacial like rock dust <clears throat> so i have a bunch of things that we can look at here together and take pictures my son just tried to call me <laughs> every time i'm live right uh it's okay though all right so i've got the microscope here we've gotten it here i can like maybe tilt it maybe i don't know how sturdy my system is right here but I'm gonna take pictures of it either way. So it'll be on the, the community feed on YouTube and all my other social media sites. So you'll be able to see what each of these things looks like and then we'll be able to develop our eyes and compare. And that's really how we figure things out in so many ways. Like Catherine Hinson uh, was one of the teachers in regenerative soil and she talks about how she would always get bad soil and bad compost and compare it to good compost so that she could easily differentiate and curry, and it helps develop her eye. And it's that contrast. So doing this kind of test, in music, we call the A-B test because you just switch A to B. Um, and, and that's the truth is we would do blind um, A-B test all the time on sound and what sounded better in the music studios. And then it turned, because I was the bass player for Rachel Ray's husband's band. So John, it all turned into food tests. And then we'd have like taste tests and like, and then, the, yeah, it, it, everything became this at a certain point in my life. <laughs> but, but this is like, this is basic science. I mean, this is how you figure things out. So this, this is what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to try to be like super quick, but... I'll tell you why like certain things might take a little bit longer. Um, like for instance, like when we start on our slides, I'm going to clean the slide every single time and I'm not going to do it on my pant leg that maybe you've seen um, other people do. And I, for optical purposes, am kind of a stickler around the, the, like the reason I get like really good pictures is because I spend a lot of time making sure that the slide is actually... Ah! I usually don't drop it, but... <laughs> I usually don't do it in front of people and then talk while I do it. Actually, it's funny, Elaine Ingham I, I, I always says like, when I'm talking and trying to clean the cover slips, I usually break them and then she like broke it and she was like... Yeah, and it's true. I'll be just doing things and the Kim wipes are good. They're like the best, but even then you still can get 
little dust hairs. And often it's that wipe one way that actually allows it to be fully clear. But I buff it so that it gets all the friction off because oil, even like a teeny film of oil, when you're doing this, creates these weird streaks and it screws everything up. It makes everything <clears throat> look like it's in a weird rainstorm. And it's not, it's simply you wipe that way and that you didn't apply enough pressure or enough friction to remove that that oil so a lot of these times when these are, are are given to you like they they might not say that they're clean like there's pre-cleaned ones that you can buy and i clean those ones but the ones that aren't pre-cleaned have like oil and grease and like fingerprints like they're all over the map with with how how they are so we're dealing with optics so i often like hold things up to the light and i, I pick a sweet spot because um, you're gonna find that your slides are, are, are literally imperfect. You're gonna, you're gonna see little imperfections in the slides. You're gonna see scratches in your slides, especially like doing this against the light here. <laughs> hey, four day homestead. Thank you for being here. And so, and so cleaning your slides is step one and then choosing where to place your slide is step two because optically it will change. Um, the thing is the imperfections, the scratches, um, even like the light, like I can see like on this side right here that there's abrasions in the glass and there's a scratch there and there's a long scratch there. I'm not gonna do any, any, any looking through those areas. So I'm gonna strategically, and I, quite often I go through several slides and I'm like, this slide's not good enough. It's not good enough for when I'm putting the cover slide on, but it's just fine for being a table to rest things on for doing bright field and it'd be fluorescence. So if I'm doing roots, is the quality of this doesn't even matter for most of the examinations I'm talking about. So, so, so it's not a total loss. Hey, Michael, thank you for, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us here live too. So, so these slides, you know, even if they're imperfect, even if you're like, mm, I can't, I, I, this one's not a good one. You can use it for examining like, like a table on, on, on here, roots and other larger things like seeds and, and leaves because you're not coming from below and distorting things and you're not pressing it down and having the two pieces of glass together. So, hey, Jeff. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate you all. So, so, so I'm going to choose my spot on my slide carefully. Um, and, and you know, I, no one ever taught me any of this, but I started doing this and I was like really unsatisfied with my images at first. That's the funny thing. Ha! I've got a bunch of terrible images from when I started out. And I, and I, obviously I'm not sharing those online, but it, and I actually am going to share them in the courses and highlight like, that's an oil spot. This is a streak from, from not cleaning well enough. This right here is uh, an air bubble that's extra tiny, and that's why it looks like it's like a little purple microbe. It's not. Uh, and, and then I like tap the slide and nothing, everything moves but that thing. And so you know that there's like all these different things that I just, ha you, you, no one taught me, I had to learn. Um, and, and it all revolves around making sure your slides are really clean, really clear in the areas that you're looking and, uh, yeah. And also visualizing things different ways. It forced me cause I was so frustrated to, to like leave off the cover to slip on top, to stop drowning things in water and to look at things as they are in the state that they are. And that means no cover slip. That means light, not necessarily from below. Epifluorescence is a beam from above. And so I look at the surface of things and because bright, bright field is a silhouette, essentially, you really can't visualize all the things that are possible. So that's what made me think of bright field. I was like, we got to think about lights at different angles and, uh, and nonlinear. 
So uh, I'm giving things away here today. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, but 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 there are there are angles at which um, light does very interesting things, and optic people, people who do camera work, perfectly understand that. They also understand brightness affects things, and and then how you take the pictures, and it affects things. I'm gonna watch this again. <coughs> I'm just like talking so much. And I take off the moisture and it's almost like I'm feeling, oh, that's a really good one. I'm gonna put this down so I don't like talk on it. <laughs> and then our cover slips. So cover slips are often going to stick together and, and you have to be really careful with them because it's like, they're so thin, it's almost like they're made of sugar or like, but, but they're not, they're real glass. And so they cut you. <laughs> not fun. <coughs> mm. All right, so this is the part where like, if you don't pay attention, you break it. So I'm gonna, I tend to pull. One direction and get all the moisture off first. The moisture will just ruin everything. Awesome. And again, you're going to want to look at your cover slip. I've got a uh, it looks like some scratching down here, but it's more of an abrasive scratch, right? And so it's, that's gonna create distortions. The center is the most clean and clear. Along the right side, it looks like there is some bits that could be distorted. That's the thing is it's like, I don't wear glasses though um, I, I could because I found that it messed up my, my, my other kinds of vision. And so I'm really good at seeing things up close, like small things. So yeah, you know, that took several minutes, right? That takes the longest. Like that literally is, is, what do I use? Oh, it's just like, this is what everyone's using, the photo lens cleaner, um, Altura, all natural safe camera and lens and sensor cleaner. So it's a sensor cleaner, so um, you can do really sensitive things because the sensor is the inside of your camera past the lens, that like thing that everyone's afraid to touch. At the store, they have to like, wear the gloves and they're like, you know, and you're like, wait, I'm supposed to take it this serious? <laughs> uh, all right, so let's start off with um, something that you haven't seen because you guys have seen the EM, right? You, you saw my video with the EM, let's do this last. Um, let's start off with something, and you guys have seen, well, maybe you haven't. Let us start off with something crazy. Let's do, um, recharge. So recharge is really, the molasses in it, um, is part of the reason why it works so well. <laughs> the microbes come with their sugar supply already with them. And molasses has a lot of nutrients in it. And so I'm actually gonna dilute this a little bit so that we can see it more easily. Everything else is down to the milliliter. So, yeah, I, I, it's just because of the molasses. It just is um, really dark. And, and, and you sandwich it between this, the, 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 the cover slip, but, but it turns like literally golden. And, if you, if you run this through the epifluorescence, all that sugar in there actually catches the light. And so it's like, Psh. and so that's, that's the thing is different, different liquids will operate in, uh, differently if you use the light, different forms of light. And so, especially the epifluorescence, um, you can just like wash out everything because it, it causes the excitation, um, 
the excitation wavelength to shift. Um, and that's, I don't think we're going to be able to like <laughs> have a way to like toggle in real time uh, to, to find the sweet spot through liquids yet because you need to toggle the filtration uh, uh, lens at the same time. So, <laughs> all right, well, I look possessed, LL, so I'll come back to here then. I will be distant from the camera. But basically, all I'm trying to say is that when you visualize this, it'll create, it'll create actual, yeah, spectrum tunable scopes, but you would have to affect the actual lens that the, um, the emission filter. So, um, I'm just going to do this. We're just gonna start. But basically all that stuff about the excitation and, and emission is very simple. And, and Funda has a very specific excitation and emission autofluorescence. So this is recharge, a lot of people like this. Um, let's just see what it looks like. So you start at your lowest level first, whatever that is in terms of your objectives. You're going to start probably at 40x. That's what most people have. There's weird little pocket scopes that people have now on their phones too, though. So it could be anything. So I start off there. You get in tune, and then you fine tune. Interesting. I see spores right off the bat. Um, let's go into the 400 times magnification. I see lots of, you know what? Hold on. Do what you said, Matt. Here, let me, um, let me just make sure the mouse is working and let's record. So I'm recording now and I'll be able to snap pictures as we go now. It's really important to do that because if something comes whizzing across your skin, with inoculants, especially with the state that they're in, me just adding water and showing you them, they're not gonna have like things whizzing around. But in real soil compost, you will. And so, especially when you get zoomed in. The more zoomed in you get, the faster things can move. And, and so, because they're moving through your field of vision, right? And so, we can reverse, we can slow things down, and if it's in 4K, we can like really zoom well. And so that's why this whole setup is the best way to do it. Um, it's also easy on the eyes. A lot of people get headaches from being on, I don't even have eyepieces here, so I'm not like, <laughs> this is their, their covers. Um, because it just gives them headaches. And uh, it also, I mean, this is the way to actually share. So let's begin. We're in focus there. We jump up to 100x. We start identifying things. Uh, I mean, I, right away off the bat, I see so many silica, uh, silicates. Um, this was obviously mixed with clay, probably bentonite clay. Um, of course, bentonite clay has that whole um, <laughs> issue lately. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could do all of this with um, like inoculant saving and stuff with clays um, of all sorts, even local clays. But I can see several spores right here, 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 here. Um, I'll take a picture of it. This first picture is of recharge. I'm just saying it aloud. And let's zoom into 400X. So 400X is by far the most useful like uh, magnification, so that is your 40x objective, and it's just really incredible what can be seen. And so already we can see, you know, I'm gonna lower this. So notice how I lower my light and the shapes of things change. I'm going to snap that so you guys see what I'm talking about. Basically, the shape of this spore 
um, changes with light, you see a lot more definition when it's when it's zoomed in and when um, there's a, is that lactobacilli? Yeah. So there's bacteria all over everything and it's shimmering and it's wiggling and you can see them combining and they're, 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 they look like they're kissing like this and they're tumbling in through space together. That is, is, is 100% contagion. They are making love. And they're exchanging uh, genetic material in that process. Uh, that is horizontal gene transfer. So even as the inoculants are being like combined with water, the moment they're being combined with water, they're exchanging genetic material and changing the strain that they are. So these microbes are changing in real time, right here, right now. Um, and a big part of that is because there's molasses in there. So as soon as they add that water and liquefy that molasses, the microbes are like, I'm alive, I'm ready, and there's food everywhere. And they're going nuts, you know, they're going nuts. So there's bacteria all over this. There's silicates, which means that there's clays. There's spores all over this. Um, there's, there's bacteria, very vigorous bacteria. And I see fragments of root, perhaps, fragments of mycelium. Yeah, I think those are fragments of root. Or they could be fragments of hyphae. Because the way they grow these is in grasses and they grow them in, in potting mediums and then they isolate them out and they combine them with clay. And, my, and Mike Amaranthus, the guy who created uh, Mycorrhizae Inoculant Company, he, he said that the best in mycorrhizal inoculant is pieces of hyphae. So you find those pieces of hyphae, it's awesome. There's, oh, in all my studies, the compost that's good is always going to have more hyphae than the inoculants. So it's usually spores that you see in, 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 unless it's really good. Um, and that's what Mike, Mike Amaranthus um, has always done. So yeah, I see spores um, all over the place. They're like little basketballs, um, very, very round, and then intricate edges and beautiful. There's actually, um, you, there's, there's ways to ID these spores and there's spore ID charts for all the major arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. So you can ID who are the ones that are desirable and match them up to here and do a visual check. And because there's actually, I mean, you literally every field division at 400X has at least four to six big spores. But if I look closer, I see that there's actually smaller spores too. Yeah, this is, this is incredibly vibrant. Those are lactobacilli right there. Um, and that, that, what's that? Hold on. That behavior. There's this um, three, like, three-part they meet in the middle exactly in three sections, like the inner part of like the Mercedes symbol. Um, that could be, that's super fascinating. I mean, Rhodocinomonas comes out from the center like that. Um, and remember that there's only Carrie Harwood that's visualized that from an isolated culture that she created at the University of Washington. I've already written her about, about like having an interview and maybe getting um, some cult cultures from her to do side by sides for the database. Um, and then asking if that kind of behavior that I'm seeing right there is only when they're at high enough numbers or in a certain culture. 
But that also could be a piece of hyphae and it could be nibbling on it and that's why it's moving. There are things all around it. Now, what we could do at this point is we could close the lights and turn on this and suddenly you're like, oh Matt, it's really indefined. And that's true. Let's turn off the base. That can sometimes help, but let's see if I can mess with the auto exposure. Hmm. Yeah, because the molasses refracts the light in a very particular way, um, and there's no differentiation to it, really. I mean, there is some. It's not useful to use the epifluorescence when you've got that much sugar in there. So, the bright field, um, in this case, is going to be much easier to see, but oh man, this is something that I actually, I'm gonna go back through with the dark field, uh, because I think this would be absolutely spectacular looking in the dark field. So, so yeah, this is a slide I think I'm going to set aside and we're going to revisualize. Wow, it's just gorgeous. So, so I'm going to take a picture uh, of a few of these, these spores and really try to find like a really nice one. And then I'll that'll be the one we post. Wow, there's one spore in here on this one. So that purple guy right there is moving. So I know that's not an effect, but let's, let's, let's zoom in and zoom out and see if it resolves. Because there's a green and purple cast to the um, acrom um, the acromatic, I think it's acro or acropomatic, right? I can't remember. But these lenses, the way they're optically constructed, you really have to go in and out to map um, what their actual color is when you're doing this. Um, because, because they're clear, these microbes are almost always clear because they have to let light pass through them. Um, and, and that's how they absorb energy too. Um, they, they refract light. They create like little like green and purple like rainbows on the edges but after doing this i mean like right now i'm seeing it right but you learn to ignore those distortions very quickly because you're looking at everything else um and you're discounting those kinds of things uh, like this right here this right here that's legitimately green i wonder what that is <clears throat> So, that's super interesting. It looks like a spore, actually. Or, or, could be pollen. No, pollen's usually more intricate. But yeah, it's much smaller than all the other spores. And I haven't seen any others like that. That actually could be a different kind of fungi. That could be actually more um, like a saprophyte um, spore. So, so you would, in, in doing this, what you would do is collect all those pictures, zoom up on, on them when you review, and then you take these pictures and go through the keys. Because every microbe has sets of keys. And you, and they're set up different ways. But like, like, like for like microarthropods, you're like, how many legs? And then it takes you there. And then they're like, how many joints in the legs? It takes you there. And you're like, okay, how many sections of the body? And you literally narrow it down that way, just like um, with a, with a lot, a lot of sciences. Um, oh, you want me to switch slides? Sorry. I will. All right, so I put this back to uh, 40X. I'm gonna set that aside and let's do something else. Let's do something like opposite. Uh, so this is the Azos, this is a rhizobacteria, and it's Azospirillium brazilensis. Um, so 
And then, of course, it says inert carrier, 99.9%. So let's see what that inert carrier is, right? Oh, I already did. Right. Um, so let me just be faster with the slide this time. I'm just going to not talk while I do it. Not, that's how that works. <laughs> So the Azos. And clean pipette. No, this is not a clean pipette. That had the other. So I used a pipette to do. Um... I'm gonna have to redo this. It's okay though. I can do it on the fly. doing is I essentially just added enough water for my purpose and then like dusted on the actual inoculant so yeah you can see what I did um, again that was super fast but let's just pick our area to zoom in on where it's not too intense so uh, uh, you can see the rods there are not alive, like instantly. Like there's like a rod right there and it's like instantly clear. Let me uh, start recording. For the Azos that they've got like some crystalline shapes here, sand and clay essentially mixed in. So let's, let's zoom in closer, let's find that rod. Yeah, it's like a very straight crystalline rod. Um, I'm gonna move up my, my brightness compensation a bit and then move down my actual light. And that actually gives me more definition because it's compensating for the brightness so I can actually lower it and so I can get a better picture. And that's this thing, it's awesome. Um, so, I see a lot, a lot of mineral, it's a pack of mineral. And it looks like there could be bacteria, but nothing's moving because we just added the water and there's no sugar. This is a good lesson. Um, this is why Recharge does that, okay? So, so we're seeing tons of minerals. It looks like pieces of glass. It's sand and clay, okay? And we just added things. So now we're here at, we're here at 400X and oh, they are moving. And it's unbelievable. 
it is teeming with life and it's just because they're so small and it's because they're dehydrated. <laughs> so with Elaine Ingham's, if you've ever taken anything with Elaine Ingham, she talks about how in like traditional bio, uh, biolo biological science, they're, they're doing a lot of heat and they're shrinking and dehydrating the microbes, making it even harder to see them. And so when we were working with, the, the, there's a reason why I was hydrating them before we put them on. But this is even better because you guys get to see a lesson here in action. It's, that's the thing is this place, this, this space is filled with this kind of, uh, of deeper understanding and caveats and conditions. And when you develop your eye and understanding, it's like, it becomes much more interesting. Like the whole world becomes much more interesting. Like the fact that like microbes, and people are saying that microbes can turn into crystalline shapes when it gets too hot or dry. And okay, that's incredible. Um, and that would be right alongside what plants look like and fungi look like, and then fungi create crystals. Um, so so this, is, this is really fascinating. And, and I know I said there's sand in here and clay in here, but, but it's, it's, it's A, it's their carrier, and, and, and B, it's doing a great job. So, so just because it's sand and we're like, there's sand everywhere, that's not a bad thing, you know what I mean? One, one of the primary ways that like sand water filters work is they harbor bacteria, very specific bacteria that helps clean the water as it filters through. So this is absolutely teeming with life. Um, and they're so tiny. We could even do the oil lens on this and go really close to 1000 X and they'd still be tiny. And there'd be tinier things we'd see wiggling in the distance. And that's the crazy thing is we don't know how small small is and how small gets. There's actually a gap. There's all these there's these like, uh, so all right, we have tools, right? And over time, we've developed different tools that will see in different frequencies of light, different depths of, of magnification. And like, it, we went to the, the limit of resolution with the microscope, that's what a thousand X is. And then we went further with the electron microscope, right? And, the, and, and so it's this constant process, but there's actually like a gap between them. And there's also like caveats and conditions on how electron microscopy is actually done that, that, that can change the actual reading and actual result. And just like how fast you see these things moving and they're all conjugated, changing information. And I've done things with um, closed experiments in sealed containers and had, um, things start to decay. And then when I examined them from a sterile decay with, with no soil, no compost, just the seed and the inoculant, somehow there's mites. Where did the mites come from? Are they in that person's inoculant? Right? So it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's really critical that we do these kinds of tests because if like some of those spores, you know, have, well, the spores are, are tiny compared to insect eggs. Insect eggs are pretty huge, so you'd be able to see those things. But, but I, I, I haven't seen those things yet um, in, in my examination of, uh, of, so, so what I do t typically, and this is because of what we just, we, we just saw, I typically hydrate the inoculants and then combine them with roots and seedlings and then I look at them and their behavior in context. I usually don't do a dry test like this, like where we just like put the inoculant under there, but it was requested and I love doing it. So anyway, um, we'll get to the next thing, but this is all, this is all like the same thing. It's very uniform. It's packed. Look at that. Ha! Ah, ah, ha! A crystalline dagger. It's, it, it, it's, it's like a giant, like broad 
broad sword looking type thing. Um, or the, uh, yeah, it looks like a broadsword blade broken off at the hilt. Um, and uh, it's ghostly pale. There actually, look at that. That looks like a spore or protozoa. That looks like a testate amoeba. Right there. Yeah. And right there. Oh, interesting. That's a spore. So, sorry. Um, they have other things in here other than just their pure um, um, bacteria. But it's pretty amazing though to see all like basically the same size bacteria working on something. It's, it's really remarkable actually. And that's how you can you tell it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty darn pure um, as a Sprillium Brazilense. All right, let's go back to, to the start and let's go to the next one. And at this point, I can reuse this because I feel like we got our, our information out of that one. Okay, midway. Um, so, so, yeah. They definitely are providing a good product. I would say though, that you should get the wettable powders only because the mycos that is like the regular mycos is like little rocks. And I left it in water for weeks and nothing happened. Like, like it didn't change state. And so it's like, Okay, so if I'm gonna use this inoculant, I'm gonna combine with EM at first and lower the pH and, and melt the mineral matrix so that I liberate and, and uh, initiate the fungal action because otherwise it's just gonna sit like rock in your soil. And it's also gonna look like everything else. Um, so so, so, so that's, that's the thing. Um, this is their wettable powder. Let's do that as a contrast to the Azos. We'll stay in the mic, the extreme gardening world for a minute. Um, I'm gonna just hop off camera and grab uh, my pipettes. Don't worry, I've got a few. <laughs> All right, so. Oh dear, I did two drops, hold on. Okay. Generally you don't like grab a drop back and stuff, but I've been working with fractions of drops, so I feel comfortable doing that. Um, in DNA sequencing, that's like the name of the game. You pay fortunes for fragments of drops of material and when you get them the first time, you feel like you're insane. You're like, I paid this much for like two raindrops. Like this whole kit is two raindrops. Yeah, and I still have plenty. Like, how is that real? DNA sequencing. It's those micro pipettes. Fractions, fractions of a drop. Um. <laughs> All right, yeah, thanks Jeremy. Um, I've always been silly. All right, so we see that familiar, that familiar silica. It looks like pieces of sand or glass. Hey, Northern Thai guy. I grew up with a Thai guy. He was, um, he got number one in North America at JOs in slalom. He was fast. Thai guy, Tyler Hughes. So um, again, if, if you're at this lowest level resolution, what you're looking for from here is like how, you know, jammed up everything is. And, and you can examine like organic matter sections. Um, you can examine, um, you can find worms. Pinworms are easy to see at this, at, at this magnification. You can even spot nematodes, but that's not gonna be in these. Um, a nematode would be um, 
desiccated by this. Obviously, I added water, so um, if you added a nematode into this situation, after I already had water, that'd be different, but the thing was this came from a dry powder, so. All right, so we're zooming in. Again, it's clay, but in this, there's actually aggregates. So different from the azos, which look like sand and clay particles with tons of bacteria, already with this, we see that there is organic matter mixed in um, and, and aggregates, essentially. And so we're going to jump in closer. And there are, let's see, is there bacteria in here? Who is in here? I think it's just, yeah, it's rhizophages and proradices only, it says. But it's not, because those are bacteria right there, da, 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 all over. Yeah, so there's bacteria inside, tons of bacteria inside this um, inoculant. I wonder who, who they are. We could uh, uh, DNA test it, right? So, so um, I see spores right there, um, large spores right there. And yeah, so these are pieces of organic matter that were inoculated and probably the growing medium. And I'm looking for the telltale signs of, of spores. Super interesting. The, this had so many spores in comparison. And this is kind of the situation of the mycos uh, and trevardeces um, granules. It just looks like um, pieces of rock. Yeah, and the thing with spores is they have symmetry. And so they're very easy to spot. There's a lot of bacteria in here. There's a lot of um, inert. Inert material that could be bacteria that hasn't woken up. But... But yeah, I don't see much. I mean, there's a, there's a let's let's switch it. Boom. So if we like look for fungal evidence with the lights out, we see here. So they have. Oh my gosh, is that gorgeous? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, you guys got to see it. You guys got to see it, right? You're here with me, right? Okay, this is one of my best pictures. This is how it happens for me. I'm just going along and then it's like, bah -bah! and we're like on a horizon together and there's like this unbelievable like sunset. This is um, definitely a piece of uh, organic matter that was uh, fungally digested. Um, so this looks like actually an inoculated root section um, that uh, was inoculated and that organic matter was chopped up uh, and, 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 and it's part of the mix. So, oh man. Oh, I'm so happy that you guys got to be here for this. So this is gonna cook it. So I'm gonna quickly take a few pictures while it cooks it. Um, Unfortunately, that is part of the uh, intensity of the blue light is it is going to cook your subject a little bit. Um, I'm going to, oh, get a bunch of these. There is sometimes the ability to do a composite image. Um, and that can be really fun, really cool.
but most of the time it's about finding that sweet spot where enough of the image is in focus that it um, the, your mind um, fills in the rest. Wow, all right, look, we can move around now. Um, so, so yeah, that's a piece of root. And you can see right here, the sections of the cells. There's like these, these sections, these are actually cells. Um, sorry, the, the circle of the light is, 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 for you guys, the circle of light isn't on there, but for me it is. And so I'm like, great, let's be around it. Um, but it's following me. Oh, it's so beautiful. Ah, this is unbelievable, you guys. These are the best organic matter inoculation pictures I think I've ever gotten. So this is a decomposing root that was inoculated by fungi. And so pieces of root and pieces of fungal hyphae are the best. But if we just start, keep surfing around like this, I'm going down and down. You guys see that there's nothing, right? And let me move around. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that piece is right there and I can see it even at, um, even at a hundred X it's right there and it's all lit up. So there's all these other organic matter chunks that are not lit up. Um, sorry, I'm having to like crane around, but, um, let me move around and see if I can get another one because that was visually unbelievable. Oh, you, you're a friend. Here we go, let's dive in. You're too tiny though. So, so you can see how it's only a little bit of this. Let's jump back out. So this in and out kind of work is how you find things. Um, Oh, okay, 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 I found something. Here we go. It's got a halo around it. This could be good. Oh, it's just so tiny. Let me let in some more of the light. The other question is, it's like I can kind of miss things. All right, I'm closing the light all the way. Yeah, that right there looks like a crystal, a very large one. But the way to check that is to back up, go back to Brightfield. Oh, you know what? It looks crystalline, but guess what? It's actually um, an abrasion on the glass. So it's creating a visual distortion at a different level in the field. So it's best to just go a little bit further and get out of that way. So again, you know, um, man, I really want to go search for more of those, those pictures. Um, <laughs> um, the glare off the poster, you want me to like lower it? We can be darker in here, I guess. Into the darkness we go. All right. So, um, yeah, I want to keep finding images like that. Unbelievable. Turn off the base. This allows us to um, find things visually. See that? That aura is from the actual damage to the glass. So as I move around um, with the lens, I think this is the actual one that we were looking at before, but let's, let's dive in and see. No, this is pretty good. So this is another, uh, yep, 100%, a piece of a root. So the fungal hyphae wouldn't be stacked and compartmentalized like this is in little subsections. That's plant matter. And it's glowing because it was inoculated by our muscular mycorrhizal fungi. So, so, so instead of spores, they're all in with the pieces and they don't have very many pieces, but those pieces do a great job. Um, the argument is that they're superior to the spores because the spores decide to spore like There we go. 
All right. So, so let's keep going. I want to be able to get through everything. We've already been an hour. Okay. So already I'm like, I think, I think Mykos has some interesting things going on, but they're different. You know what I mean? They're, everything is a little bit different and you can tell that they went about, they chose their battles. You know what I mean? This, per uh, this person was like, we're going to go with spores. That person's like, we're going to go with uh, sections of root. Because we didn't see any hyphae. We only saw root. Guys, I'm going to take those pictures that I'm taking. And I'm going to post them on my social media and in my uh, community posts on YouTube. So you'll be able to see all these in like hyper real color, 4K. Just in, in a little bit. So... And that's why I'll, I'll try to hurry up so that I can do that before my next live with my advanced permaculture student online course. All right, let's go. Next pipette. Um, we did this, we did this, we did this. Let's do for comparison a pure endomycorrhizal inoculant and let's see if it's spores or if it's roots or if it's hyphae because those are the, the three things it could be. One drop, not a lot. Here we go. And I'm gonna move it out of the way. All right. So, um, I have to reset the video. There we go. All right. So we're here. We're zoomed out. Let's actually go back to Brightfield. Turn the base back on. All right, so this looks a lot like, ooh, actually, there's some other minerals that are closer to like the compost. There's aggregates in here. Um, and this and aggregates are coming from the compost that they combined with the sand where they were growing typically um, Bahia grass to get the inoculation going and to um, actually kill, winter kill them and then take that soil medium and make that the inoculant. And so that's what they do. So that's why there's like a lot of sand in here. There's a lot of clay silicates in here. Um, but there's also some other minerals and that's why there's yellows and greens, much like a compost would have, which is pretty darn cool. All right. So let us jump in further. And this is, I'm, those are the things that allow them to actually have a medium, you know what I mean, to, to carry these things in and preserve them. So let's go a little bit. Oh, wow. So there are some really tiny bacteria in this. There's also larger bacteria in this. Um... And they went with their spores. So I see spores there. Let me just make sure. Yeah, you're roundy. And they can be like football shaped. They can be round. Um, and they can, don't have to be perfectly like um, symmetrical. Like there's that one. That one's look like really cool looking. Um, but, but they're always like a pattern. And there always is a symmetry to them. Like there's that one. That, that one's. Just like that other one, um, our first one that we looked at in Recharge, except that's much larger than the one that, that I was like, this spore is not like the other spores. That's the same exact spore. So, so we're seeing overlap between them, and that's true because the labels actually have a lot of overlap. So yeah, I'm seeing spores, not as many spores as Recharge, Wow, a greater diversity of spores. Let me just take a picture of this. One, two, three, four, five. Well, they don't have the spiky spores in this one. Uh, well, they might, let's keep looking. The shard sand that's silicate, right, for that. Or that could be something else. Let me look at that closer. Yeah, that could 
be in part of an insect. Super interesting though. Yeah, I would love to get the polarizer on that and run it through the degrees, and then we would see what it's made of, um, because everything has an actual frequency um, that it resonates at. So um, you can tell those sorts of things with, with the polarizer. But yeah, this is this is this is this is spores, and um, uh, the, the the aggregates, the organic matter aggregates, which probably have more spores in them. But let's go into the epifluorescence and check things out. Mmm. Mmm. Dinata. Oh, wait. But is this... Do you see how it's kind of weird? I bet you anything is an imperfection in the glass. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a mineral. It's a mineral that's very reflective. It moved when I tapped the slide. You saw me tap the slide, right? That's, that's one of the, the surefire ways you know if it's on the, the glass or if it's in the medium. All right. So the, the, the reason the Mycos one is so popular, I think, is because it follows my Amaranthus's advice, the father of mycorrhizal inoculants, the founder of, of the first mycorrhizal inoculant co uh, company. So, so that's what that looks like. All right. And by the way, folks, if you want to do this sort of thing, I have a Kickstarter going right now. And you will learn how to not just do this stuff, but everything that has to do with plants. So compost, the leaves, the roots, bright field, polarized, not just, not just uh, bright field and epifluorescence, and we will also do dark field. Um, that's, that's here, but it's oil. So the second I put this on and put it below and have it come up and touch the bottom of the slide, the bottom of the slide's covered with oil. And so it, it just makes it for, it makes it, so I have to clean everything up. <laughs> so I wanted to be quick and focus on um, like just the comparisons. So, so that's what I'm doing right now. All right, so let us now look at, should we look at one more inoculant? Should we look at micro micro? All right, let's do that quick about it though. What do you guys think it's going to be? Do you guys think it's going to be spores, aggregates, or pieces of root? What do you guys think? This is a popular one. Done. This down. Right. Boom. Back in business. All right, so I'm going to put on the record. And again, very similar. But I want to kind of like see you and if you're like one of my special aggregates. Yeah, it looks like you are. Ooh, let's go look closer at this. So, this is an aggregate, not a root. And you can tell that because the specks of light are like little dots all over it. And so, um, those could be Spores, they could be crystals. I'd have to go a little bit closer. They're tiny though, kind of interesting. But um, this is a non-uniform shape, so there's no compartments, um, there's no grid form. And it, I mean, it, it looks like, it looks like they encapsulated 
and it looks like they actually mashed up the fungi into fragments, and that's why there's little pieces, and then put it into this little clay conglomerate. Looks like a little, yeah, like a little ball of clay with little crushed up pieces of fungi in it. And we're at 400x. So I'm going to take a picture of that. And this is micro myco. And so it's endomycorrhizae, ectomycorrhizae, rhizobacteria, trichoderma. Um, and it, it doesn't say what else is in here. But it's, I mean, it's going to be clay or, or sand. Um, so let's dive back out and navigate around. I'm going to turn up the light. So yeah, same sand and clay silicates everywhere and aggregates. Let's zoom in and see if we can find some spores. And it's not as numerous with the rhizobacteria, nowhere near as numerous as the azospirillium or recharge, but they are there and they're active. They're moving around a lot and they're conjugating a lot. You can see them going crazy. Um, and let's look for some spores. That looks like that looks like a spore right there. But there's not that many. I don't... I, they went with... Um, I believe that's a spore right there. They're small though. Yeah, so, so compared to all the others, I see way less spores. And you know what? I see one right there. Um, right there. What I've found in testing with seeds and the trials I'm doing with inoculation to create images of inoculants inside roots, micro, micro is the least effective. So, and that's just my review. This is just a sample I have of their stuff. I've not tried endless samples of their stuff. Um, and so, and it might have even been resold by people because, you know, people resell things. And so maybe they've been old. I don't know. But I don't see any spores. And spores last for like ever. I mean, there are spores. But you know what I'm saying. Comparatively, it's, it's, it's nothing. Um, but maybe they're inside the aggregates. Let's look at this. Mm. There's little bits of fungal um, decomposition evidence everywhere, like little touches here and there, like little bits. Autofluorescing. Gone. But that's very minor. So... I, I'm not going to buy that guy again. I think, I think, um, Mycos has the right idea. And I've used them for many years and I always thought they were good. And it looks like because they chose a better route in general for their products, that they're superior. They have really high concentration. Let's get a look at our friend Iyama's uh, comparison. Oh, I gotta, I didn't wipe the cover slip. So if you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, you can check out the Kickstarter in the link below in the description. You can learn how to do all of this and so much more. And notice how like we're just busting through samples here. It really is that easy and it's that instantaneous. We were looking for symmetrical shapes 
Um, and if we wanted to ID them, we'd pull up the key and start walking through that. But I typically do the foray first and I gather the information and then I go back and I edit it down to those things that I want to research and then I go through them. It's much easier than, than, than trying to do it all at once. You end up getting bogged down doing the research while you're still doing this and then you have that going on and eating up your memory. Sorry, I don't want the memory to run out. All right, boom. Here we are in EM land. So immediately we see, I would say yeast flakes. Um, let's turn down the light all the way. Um, let's just zoom in. Heck yeah. Look how, look, 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 look how um, bright those are already. Like all of that is fungal. So like EM is like lit up with fungi already just off the, off the, whoa, hold on. That is a fantastic picture. Um, all right, so yeah, look at that. So those, those yeast collections, oh my gosh. They're gorgeous. So these are the beautiful yeast collections from inside here. And I'm gonna just take a picture. So it's fascinating now because is it just me or are those rhodocinomonas? I think this might be rhodocinomonas and not yeast because of where I'm at in the, um, and if so, this is like, let me just see this, hold on, let's go back out. Wow. Um, this might be rhodocinomonas. Those are yeast there though. No, they're clumping really fascinatingly though. I wonder if they partner, because you know the only way to grow Rhodocidomonas is in yeast. Like you grow it in yeast broth. So, so they might actually create factories inside these, um, th these, these aggregates. I've got to talk to Carrie Harwood about it because she's the only one that's taken an isolated picture on the earth of purple non sulfur bacteria Rhodocidomonas palustris. And everyone else has been trying for 30 years to find it in the wild. And we, I DNA sequence it, I find it. But, but IDing bacteria is, is literally like the holy grail. Like it's, it's almost impossible to do. Um, especially because of how much things change, how quickly they change. Oh man, so this is amazing. Um, the bacteria in this, uh, they really are smaller and more numerous than most of the other preps. The, you can see a lot of the yeasts. And if we actually turn out the lights, you can see the yeasts and how they're, they're, they're lit up. And these all look like typical yeasts. But this, there's like a messiness around the edges of the yeasts that, that are tiny, like, 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 like fingers. And that's the behavior of Rhodocidomonas. Palustris is they make these like fingers and these flower shaped circles, uh, like the crowns of snakes, essentially. Really weird. Um, so yeah, so that's EM when we've done a whole video on EM before, but in comparing this, this is incredibly fungal, um, compared like, well, like it's, it's effect on the, the aggregates. 
its effect on, on the, the foods. And this is why people are using it to digest things and they get more fungal dominant compost when they're using EM. Uh, because, I mean, you just turn, turn on the lights and you see things glow. That means it's fungal. Uh, and that's how easy epifluorescence is. And that's why I really feel like everyone should be able to have a light source with a proper filter on it that narrows it to 480, 490 nanometers in a tighter bell curve so that you are, are hitting the, the excitation zone. And then an emission filter, which is a 23 millimeter lens that is a barrier filter. They go right, uh, this is all included in here. And, but in that, this guy, ugh, it's right here inside. And I'll even, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this right now. I don't wanna ruin it. I'm so afraid of like um, scratching things or like messing things up, but I will show you. Do you guys see that lens right there? That little optical lens? That's filtering out all the frequencies below 510. And so it's that, It's that filter that I'm, I'm, I'm right now working with like a couple different scientists. <laughs> See a smudge on it? <gasps> no! It's okay. Um, even if it does a smudge, I, I've got, I've got the cleaners. But, um, but we are going to have sets so you can install that and have the proper light. And then you can, with your own bright field kit, be shining it on there and have a camera and I mean, you can put your eye on it. I don't think it's smart. Um, all these light forms, like when you isolate everything and your eyes like, like so close on it, it's like, um, it's just so close to the eye. It just doesn't, it's not good. Um, when it's over here and you got it on the camera, it's easy on the eyes and there's no possibility of it ever hurting your eyes. So that's what the kits are gonna be. They're gonna be a special light with a special focus filter on the light and a, and, and a lens that allows you to um, create a barrier filter on, on your microscope. And, and so that's what we're gonna be doing so that people can do epifluorescence at home with even a $250 microscope, because that's what that is. So, so, so that's, that's, that's that. It's not hard. Um, this just is like incredibly super nice to just do that and have it all like locked and loaded all at once. Um, Cause it opens the filter as it turns on the light and, 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 and then has the, um, the focus as well. So I hope that this was educational. I'm, I, I've got a, another class coming up in a few minutes. Um, but if you haven't checked out regenerative soil microscopy, you should, because this stuff is so powerful. You literally are able to like see the way things really are, to be able to pull things up against each other and be like, holy cow, this has three times the amount of spores. And you just see it. It's easy to see. So the link is in the description please check it out. And if you know people that care about soil, that, that care about what, what's really true when it comes to our plant health, our soil health, share the link, share this campaign with them. There's only a few more hours. This is the last day. And this Kickstarter is the most important Kickstarter I've ever done because of the database. The database is a free resource for everyone. And it's going to help everyone, regardless of whether you contribute to the, comp, uh, the, the, the crowdfunder, the Kickstarter thing or not. This will help everyone because this database is going to allow us all to, to open an open and transparent forum, look at all the soil tests, compare all the soil tests, and look at our soil tests over time. And holistically, look at all tests. And when we combine those holistic uh, tests and we, we, we take down just the soil and the plants and put it together, suddenly all of it is in the open. Because the goal is the highest nutrient density in plants. And the only way to do that 
is to map a clear path from practice and methodology to that. And it's going to be through living high organic matter soils that are minerally coherent and high in paramagnetism. And I've already seen this in the literature, I've already seen this with successful farms, but it's not widely known, it's not widely accepted, and it's just the beginning. Because once we start doing those, what are we call best practices now, in three to five years, out of that, everyone choosing what's best because it actually delivers like the actual quality that we desire, we are going to have the best turn into good, better, best again. It's going to zoom in again. We're going to keep zooming in, you know, on what is best as a community and sharing it publicly so that people are like, wow, in my bioregion, the compost made with, with the wild grasses from like the, the fields that we think are just like weeds has the most incredible biology and it's all those IMOs from the, the, the native grasses and they make our compost and our soils absolutely incredible. And so suddenly there becomes this premium on letting your fields go wild and become weed patches because they make the best compost. And so all the native pollinators are getting there, getting in and and I'm not, and, and I'm, I, I don't know if that's like proven out yet, right, right? Um, but that's one of those things I suspect to be 100% true. But I haven't seen it yet because we haven't done it yet. And we haven't shared the information yet, but we will. And it will happen. And all the moon cycles, all of, all the things that were like, I, does that work? Is that real? Is the planting to the moon real? We're going to see. And, and then we're also going to be able to map the, the microbial relationships and reactions to the moon cycles. And if there's any solar flares that we, we you know what I mean, we'll see if the microbes have a reaction too. The, and, and then if, there, if the, the, mag, you know, the magnetism of the earth continues to change, as it has been, because the U.S. Navy is requesting that we change all maps because North Pole has shifted so much, magnetic North Pole, these things all have effect. We don't know what they are yet. But mapping them together in a community that's open, transparent, and you can be anonymous if you like, allows us to see things that have never been seen before. And because it's our communities, it, 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 it started by permaculture folk, regenerative ag, regenerative soil scientists, regenerative soil students, all these people with deep knowledge of soil, the bar is gonna be high. And we're going to be having people like singing frog farms on there. People who are already leading the way in the quality of their soil. And, and it's just going to cause a, 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 like a trophic cascade of change that will lead to better and better food and through better and better soil. And that's going to lead to better and better health of our plants and people. All right, well... Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you so much. Click the link down below and, and I will see you guys soon. I want food too, not poison. And the only way to do that is to actually, because so much of the water and soil are already poisoned in the air, and like we actually have to use compost and use biofertilizers to actually fix that because they do. 1% of bio, uh, uh, catalyst bio amendments compost is acromobacter. Acromobacter digests glyphosate. So in other words, the best compost on the market, catalyst bio amendments, and I want to test wormies too, because I hear that they're also so absolutely incredible, but they're different because it's a worm-based compost. And they do things with bokashi in there. So I want to compare that. I want to, I want to know. But, but we need these helpers in the biology and the organic matter to be the buffer and also the receiver uh, for the excess nutrients to balance all of our soils, to heal all of our soils, to degrade and destroy toxins, to tie up heavy metals um, and transform heavy metals like lead into pyromorphite crystals by bonding the phosphorus. All of these things can happen, but they can't unless you see it. You, you, can't, you can't 
address something that you can't perceive or understand. So we first have to have the understanding and then the perception. We have to be able to test for it, be able to recognize it. And then when we have that knowledge, we can act with, with confidence. So check out, check out the Kickstarter, the Regenerative Soil Microscopy Kickstarter and the R Soil Database. It's, I've never had a Kickstarter this successful before and, and folks are absolutely excited about it because this, this idea is the biggest idea I've ever had and it's going to change all of soil science, all of farming and all of food. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you for being part of my community, for joining us here live. I'm Matt Powers, grow abundantly, learn daily and live regeneratively. And I will see you, I hope, in the Kickstarter. All right, the link is down below in the description. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much.